Welcome to the Influencers in Accounting podcast. And on behalf of the Accounting Influencers Podcast Network, I'm Rob Brown here with a special guest that's been on before. It's Kate Johnson. Hello to you, Kate. Hi, glad to be back. Kate, we had you talking last time about breaking out of that CPA, bookkeeping, accountant role, maybe building a side hustle, but thinking more entrepreneurially. We'll put that in the show notes as a link to that. But then you talked a little bit about your world as you've got a, a CPA, a, a bookkeeping business, and you've got a side community, which is probably bigger than your bookkeeping business now. And yes. that is teaching people to do what you've done. So in 60 seconds, can you give us a quick summary of your business as it stands? your life? Sure. I've got a small bookkeeping business called Heritage Business Services, and I'm trying to niche in a, in a software and I'm serving clients and, and kind of building a non-traditional bookkeeping practice. And then I help encourage people to build the career that they love in the accounting industry. And there's about 1000 different flavors that can take. And I do that via my bookkeeping side hustle community work. Yes. And we talked a little bit on <laughs> alternative revenue streams and thinking outside the box, to quote the cliche. We're going to talk about video today, something you're really passionate about. You've got a thriving Facebook group and YouTube community. Just before we do that, if people look at your LinkedIn profile, and we'll put that into our show notes, it says, I offer 5.30 a.m. meetings to free up your day. So are you some kind of giant, giant owl that is awake in the nighttime? <clears throat> Tell us all about that. So I go to bed early. Um, okay. I'm not... I'm not... <laughs> Learned a long time ago, not much good happens after midnight. So I'm I'm asleep well before that. Um, no, um, that is sort of a a relic of how I built my business. Um, you know, just as a, a family and our our beliefs and the way we've tried to grow, my husband and I have decided to 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 grow our family while I'm also trying to build a business. Um my I'm I'm mostly a, a mom. My youngest is is in school now, but they go to a um a, a private classical Christian school that's only a half day model. So I'm expected to be a, a part of their education. Um, so I, I work limited hours on purpose. And so the 530, I'm, I'm up. So I work up naturally without an alarm. Um, but clients book me. <laughs> um, and that it's, it's really been great because I can get a significant amount of work that I'm up anyway, right? That's what I thought. I'm up working at 5.30 because that's how my whole business has has been. Um, that was for a while when my kids were still at home. Like there was days when I could only work for, till like they woke up. So well, I got it's that 5.30 right now. So you're true to your word, Kate. I yeah. am up early. That's right. I'm in America. And we're recording this at a normal time for you. <laughs> um, but it's, that's where I, that's, that's the, the genesis of that. Um, and I, you know, in, in a way, it's a way for me to find a client that matches me like they're they're early birds they want to work early too i mean so it's been it's been great and yeah sure. a couple times a month i probably have a meeting with a client at that time and it's, it speaks to the modern world that we're in that we can work almost anytime anywhere it's a remote world we're all hybrid we can do things from home the covid pandemic has proved that and if people want to do some work at 9 10 11 o'clock at night or three four five in the morning they can do it these days and still run a business mm -hmm. yes yes yeah. So it's do be empowered to like think think outside the box in that regard, y'all. Um, yeah. Set your boundaries. You know, like I don't also have nine p.m. meetings because that would not work for me, right? I'm horrible at nine because I'm good at five thirty. Got it. That makes sense. And we asked you in the last episode about how you build a community, and we talked about the importance of networking. And one of the pieces of advice you gave was to keep it real and authentic. And you're very upfront about your faith your Christian faith. You mentioned there the Christian school. I'm a fellow committed Christian, so I get that as well. How does that come into your business, if at all, Kate? Hmm. Um, you probably not asked that a lot, are you? <laughs> no. Um, so, I mean, I, I definitely try to, to walk out my faith. So my, my public persona is, uh, I, I try to have that be God honoring at all times. Um, even though it's not like everything's always roses. Um, but, um, you know, in what I put out to social media, um, I I speak like I want to be known. Um, and, you know, I want I speak like I want to be known even like off camera or off blogging or, or sure. whatever. So I uh, other ways um, I I mention my faith and how I've built my life around some of like I 
lead a Bible study on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. And, and so that's blocked off on my calendar. And I'm very upfront about that. Like, that's why I don't have that time available on my calendar. Um, uh -huh. also, I'll, I'll try to say that. Um, but in general, um, not I wouldn't say I'm too showy about it. Um, I talk about tithing to my clients. Um, that's that's one kind of practical way. But sure. just when it naturally comes up, I, I there's nothing that is I don't feel like I'm being strategic about no. my faith, if that makes sense. No, I wasn't implying that you were, and I, I'm exactly the same with it, but it's a very important part of what we do. And in keeping things real and authentic, uh, we don't hide that from people if it comes up. Right. And I, I like to I like to emphasize, especially to the people who are building their businesses, the, the bookkeeping side hustle part of my life, um, that like, what are we building for if it's not for god's glory for me so like i want to build so i can give more like the bigger my the, the better i succeed the more good i can do um and so i i that's that's probably my strongest message is like wow what can i do the better that i am at my business yeah i get that martin bissett my co-partner in accounting influences would, would echo that in making more money so you can make more of a difference in the world that, that's yes. terrific let's deep dive into this topic Kate, because we've titled this uh, How Smart Accountants Use Video. Now, accountants could be bookkeepers. You're big into video, and we are in a video world. My kids came out with a verb a few weeks ago that I'd not heard before. I asked them how to do something, and they said to me, have you YouTubed it? Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, the old, that's the new, have you Googled it? It is. It's the new Googled it. And we've got TikTok now and Insta Reels and stuff like that. So... Just set the scene for us in the importance of video in today's modern world of business. I mean, you set it up perfectly because I've got some stats. YouTube is the second most uh, visited website because it's the it's the search engine that people are using. You can use YouTube as search. So it's not a surprise at all that your kids said, have you YouTubed it? Yeah. And that's what I want ac other accounting professionals to realize that that's where you're going to be found. I decided to niche into software because I knew that I was going to be, I was like, someone needs to help these people and no one is. And I'm, I'm trying to win that helpfulness in this new category of the FreshBooks software, which is what I'm trying to like win the race in. I'm trying to be an early adopter in that. Um, and it, that people are searching for problems on YouTube and they're getting me. Um, so yes, I'm a big believer in, in using video. I don't think, I, I think it's not an option for accountants right. anymore. I think you're, we've, we've hit that turning point and you are just gonna shrivel and die if, if you don't figure out how to use whatever reasons are keeping you from using video. If you don't figure out how to get past that. That's a good point. That's the burning platform of what happens if you don't embrace video being left behind ceasing to be relevant, ceasing to be current. And accountants, bookkeepers, those professionals listening, they're not used to being front and center. They don't like being on camera. They've had to do it in a pandemic world where we've moved to Zoom and Teams and other platforms are available, but they're still not comfortable with it and they'd still rather be face to face. But to stay in the eye and on the radars of people, you've got to be on video, haven't you? Well, why do you like being face to face? Probably you've had successes forming relationships with clients. Yes. So this is how to be face to face. My, you know, face with my wild red hair is what people are seeing when they are thinking about their accounting problems. <laughs> like that's I want people to see my face whenever whenever they have finally reached their their limit or or maybe the wise ones are like I'm not going to let myself get to my limit. I know that I need this cuz my my mentor told me that, you know, when you let your accounting fall apart, like you aren't you have no data uh, to run your business. So maybe, you know, the, the select few that pick us up sooner rather than later, we we love those clients, right? Um but but otherwise, when things go wrong, I want my face in their memory um and that's what I think video does. Mm, that's true. I heard a great quote called the tyranny of choice. And that says that when somebody needs what you do, what makes them think of you first above and beyond all of their other choices, including the choice to do nothing. That's the tyranny of choice. And there are so much choice out there. There's so many different options. So how do you get on people's radars? How do you get them to think of you first? And video makes it personal. It makes it visual. 
I search for things on YouTube, not just because it will give me answers, but it gives me them in video format, which is easier for me taking it in than explaining it in text. So we're in a video world. There's no escaping that now. I mean, I yes, my, some other stats I have, 93% uh, of businesses gain new customers as a result of branded content in video, 32% um, annual increase in video since 2013, like in, in video pr production and, and use in marketing. So here's the thing. You mentioned at the beginning, like this is not natural for people in our industry. Uh -huh. That means the bar is low. <laughs> like <laughs> it's that, good news. The, the bar is on the floor, people. Like you, you can. It doesn't. You don't have to be good. Like the YouTube videos that you're watching, Rob, and that we've all watched, and that you are impressive. Like we don't have to go there, because so many of the people are stuck behind those in-person meetings only in the way that they've always done it. Mm. Um, my tutorials aren't, my tutorials aren't great. Um, I don't have the fancy this and the fancy that, like, it's like my face at the beginning. I teach my little thing. Um, I've gotten better. Your videos will be bad. So get over it, make a bunch of bad videos and then they'll start to be good. And you'll figure out how to, you know, you'll figure out that sweet spot of for your industry, what level they need to be at, or what you're best at explaining? Are they are they tutorials like me? That's where I think I shine. Um, for for my you know for the client acquisition part of my business. Um, you're you'll, speaking you'll, to you'll some of the out. barriers here. People have felt that it needs to be a Hollywood production, lights, camera, action. The backdrop needs to be perfect. The lighting, the sound's got to be absolutely great. But look at us. We're in our little offices here. We've got bookshelves mm -hmm. in the back, and it's real. And the bar has come down with what's allowed to be in your background now. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect for you to communicate. And that's good. Yeah, people people want to be helpful. If your if your information is good, they're not they don't they don't care. Um the the shine is gonna is gonna fade. Like maybe you have a really great video, but if your brain's pretty dumb, like you'll, you know, they're not gonna listen to your second video. Yeah. So what advice would you give for an accountant, a CPA, a bookkeeper that wants to present more of a visual personal brand they've got stuff that they want to share even if they're employed rather than just doing their own thing they want to create some thought leadership put some content out there how do they get started Kate is there a process a structure hmm um so you have to be able to cre create a video and then you have to think of what you want to say okay. I would say probably we each have a penchant towards one but you have to be able to do both so if you're really good at, at, at scripting or, or outlining, um, work on your creation techniques, um, start, start easy, you know, don't, don't be doing the advanced techniques yet, but just start. But, and if you're really good at creation, figure out, okay, how do I condense my message? Maybe I just do like a little 30 second Instagram thing um, just to get started. Um, I, have, I have really progressed in my journey with like my scripts and I finally have kind of like a format um, and you'll, you'll fall into that. So um, I would say figure out where your skill set um, lacks because some people are probably great at like making videos, right? But they just, don't, but they've, but they've, you know, never put their face on them. So um, you need to practice doing that. Um, start easy. Um, internal communications is probably a great way for you to start, like do tutorials for your team that, and then put them in a library. And then it's like, oh, now I can share the tutorial about how to invite me to the general ledger software with every client that, you know, every prospect, and that's going to be their introduction to me. Invite mm -hmm. me to your accountant file. And here's the 30 second tutorial about how to do that. Like you'll grow if you start, if you start internally, I think starting internally is probably the best spot if you're very, very nervous because hopefully your employees, you know, like you. <laughs> um, and that's an excellent suggestion them. because they know you, they're expecting instructions from you if you're a leader or a peer and you can test the waters if you like i i really like that idea and then you get your confidence i send a lot of video emails uh, so there's a plugin called bomb bomb there are others available where you can record something to your screen and then put it into an email that's increasing k isn't it yes and i'm guessing so you already have a relationship with that person so there's yes. probably some some shared love there and that's like probably the next step i always say like take your favorite client and start communicating with them with video and they're going to love you anyway. Cause they've seen you through your ups and downs, right? You, they've been a client for a long time and they haven't fired you yet. So your bad video is not going to make them fire you. Um, that would be kind of a next level. And then, then 
then it's going to be so successful. You're going to be like, I'm going to make bomb bombs for everybody. Get ready. Mm -hmm. No one's, I'm not going to shut up. <laughs> I, but you've got to have something to say. You spoke there about a message and being an authority, being credible, being an expert, being a trusted advisor, accountants, CPAs, bookkeepers, they have so many great ideas, so many things that they're good at, so many avenues they can speak into with authority. I, maybe for some of them, it's a little bit bewildering to say, well, what do I start talking about? Will people even see me as any kind of authority or expert? So we are all, I think like marketing research always says that the things that we think we know, we overestimate that everyone else knows those two. So just, just convince yourself that those things that you're like, well, no one's going to want to hear this. There's like millions of people who need to hear it. Um, we're just biased to thinking like, well, that was hard. That wasn't easy. That's, that's easy for me to learn. And you'd that's you forget proximity me. bias, Kate, sorry to interrupt, that, that you get one. so that's close to one. what you do. You don't feel it's remarkable, do you? Exactly. And I don't know if I can share a link with you for the show notes, but I just interviewed someone named Jeremy Wells because he was making a lot of content. And I, this is what I do in my bookkeeping side hustle community. And I'll send you this link y'all, but this video was so good because he was making short videos and a newsletter and he had all this stuff and he talked about his process for doing it. Um, and the, the book that he recommended was called they ask you answer. Yes. And that was how he got his, that was sort of the framework that he has done for like the last year of all this mega content creation. So don't overcomplicate things. Whenever someone asks a question, make your answer public. And he has really thrived doing that. Um, and he, y'all got to watch this interview. It's long, but it's so good because he has sliced and diced his content to where he will, he starts off as a writer, um, but then it turns into a video. So um, but but his 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 not he has like a, a PhD so he wrote and he that was his previous life was was had a lot of writing in it and that's where he landed first and then that became videos video answers but it was after he processed his thoughts via text mm. so you can do it any way but they ask you answer is a great format to think of content ideas to share with because if one person has a question you there's at least another one has yeah. the same exact question. And to build a community or any kind of following or get people to watch the stuff you produce, you need a platform. On accountinginfluencers.com, we have a test to measure your influence, and it has 10 categories on there. You can go to that site and take it for free to measure how influential you are at getting the attention of your fellow accountants and bookkeepers and everyone else. And platform is one of the categories that says, okay, where is your stuff going to live? Where are you going to play? Mm. What lane are you going to pick? We talked about video emails, but in terms of putting it in the public domain, there are so many different platforms out there. The rise of TikTok, Instagram, mm -hmm. YouTube. We've talked about Facebook and LinkedIn have videos. Just give it, the audience a bit of advice, Kit, on picking a lane there and choosing where your content lives in video form. Once you get started by picking your lane, I think you're naturally going to realize, oh, if I just made this little tweak, then I would be able to share the same content somewhere else. Uh -huh. um, so I think you'll eventually get get there um like i started live streaming and it's like oh wow like i can live stream to multi like i think you can live stream to linkedin now and there's you can live stream to facebook and i was i was live streaming on facebook and then i was like oh but i can simultaneously put it on youtube too that's for my bookkeeping side hustle life and it took me months to learn that and this was a long time ago but you're gonna learn things um so for me i i really did well in my facebook group for the bookkeeping side hustle community and I started to incorporate video and that was where I got my feet wet and I learned. And then now I'm like video all, every, all the time. Um, so just, just starting where you're most comfortable because all the platforms have a video capability now, mm. right? So take whatever platform you're already using and figure out what are people doing to add video to, to, to that. Um, what I, another place to keep trying um, is is on Twitter, there's a hashtag called VPDE, no, VPD experiment, video per day experiment. And there's a lot of accounting professionals that are doing that. It's about twice a year. It's, it's, it's informal, but it helps you make videos for 30 days in a row. And you're going to learn a lot if you do that. So some sort of a commitment like that to a platform um, where it's just like, okay, this is a down, a little bit of a downtime. I'm going to push through this difficult challenge of doing a bunch in a day, in a row. And then you're going to 
I think that's how you're going to learn quickest. Because if you make one video like a month, you're not even going to remember how to like edit or press record or mm -hmm. how to upload it to YouTube. But you'll get some skills really quickly if you do if you try to make yourself do a lot kind of all at once. And I really recommend that. I've done that challenge before and it helped me learn like different platforms. I use it as for me, I use it as a way to learn different platforms because I was already pretty deep in video. Um, but you can use it for whatever you want. It's so important to learn new skills and stay current and relevant in today's world because it's so competitive. People have so many choices. Clients have so many places they can go for their information and their professional advice. So if you are not there, you're quickly forgotten about. I I mean, I agree that by, by having your face in people's brains, they there's something about that that is, is very sticky, um, much more so than like a, a, a written blog. They're going to kind of they're, they're, they're going to scroll through. They're going to they're going to hear your voice. They're going to see your mannerisms. It's probably going to cut out the people that don't like you, which yeah. is a good thing. Um, rather but than does it even need to show your face, Kate? We see lots of great content videos out there where there's an avatar or a voiceover or they're talking over a slide or an image or something mm -hmm. like that. What do you think about that? So I say that's a really good way to start if you really can't put your face. But I would like to encourage everyone to, I mean, with, with like a Zoom recording, you can put your face tiny in the in the corner, right? And then maybe the next time, like, make it a little bit bigger uh, whenever you're doing your editing um, till, the, till the very end of the, you know, of your journey, you're going to be like starting all your videos with your big face and then go down to whatever you're, you were going to do without your face on there mm. uh, potentially. I, I don't want to leave the advice of like, you never have to put your face out there. I think that for most people, it's something that they will be able to overcome those fears that's keeping them from doing that. And if you need en encouragement, call me, I will, you, you can practice with me. I'll watch, you know, I'll, you can send me your first video and I'll tell you it was, it was so good. Cause it, it, it's going to be good. Um, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's going to be bad in a way, but it's going to be good because you're doing it and your competitors are not. So That's it. um, it's going to be better than all the people not doing it. And we are exactly. used to webcams now, aren't we? We're used to doing selfies. We used to seeing our own face on the screen. You talked about a low bar earlier. It doesn't have to be a big Hollywood production. We can all just press and go. It doesn't even need a lot of technical editing skills, does it? I mean, it, it, no, no, just, just, just start. My, my advice is hit record. Like, just hit record the, the big scary red button that all, you know, that's like the universal symbol for recording, yeah. hit it and, and see what happens. And um, speaking of statistics, that's another one, zero accounting professionals have died because they made a video. Um, that's <laughs> extensive research that I've done. No one has died from doing that. So you won't die. Your, your, your heart is going to race and then you'll be fine. That's great. Kate, Kate, this is terrific. It is a real inspirational call to arms for accounting professionals too push out of the comfort zone a little bit and embrace video and be more intentional with it. Just to finish off, I will put all your contact details in the show notes so people can reach out to you. What's going to be happening in five years time? Let's say you and I are sat here. It's 5.30 in the morning for Kate Johnson and you and I are having a, a further conversation in the video world, in the online world, in the influencer space. What kind of things do you think we might be talking about? What's coming up? I think education is really changing. So people are going to be using video when before they have done in-person learning. Um, that's what I'm, I mean, that's what I'm hoping for because I'm a teacher at heart. Um, so I want to be in five years, I want to be the world's best teacher for the soft, for the FreshBooks software that I've decided to niche in. Um, but I think that's going to happen a lot. People aren't going to wait to, to learn about taxes in school so when you can teach them what they need to know that's where i think especially for in our industry it's it's really going to shine um the people who have the crazy messages about tax planning this and no tax like that's going to go away the solid teaching is going to be what rises to the top um and we're going to see crazy changes in like online education and people building courses and that's all going to be video based so starting now learning how to do that, learning how to do tutorials, plus your face on there to, you know, to be the best teacher in their mind. Um, start, start now, because I think that's one, one area where it's, it's really going to change because the marketing piece is that's, that's a given, like we're already there. You need to be on video if you want to win the marketing side. And Kate, let's speak finally to the older people. Uh, I'm slightly older than you. You're a younger face in this world. 
And they may be thinking, well, listen, who wants to see my face on video? I'm, I'm in my 50s. I'm in my 60s. I've been doing this a long time. There are so many young influencers out there that are digital natives. They've grown up with this stuff. So is there a place for me? What would you say to them? Well, if per, perhaps if you, I, I think your face is valuable. So put those, put first of all, put that negative message aside. But think of it in terms of a broad strategy. Like maybe it's fine. Maybe it's not the most valuable use of your time to learn the editing skill yourself. So you write the scripts because you have the fountain of knowledge that that pup doesn't have. So mm -hmm. you're creating the message, and maybe someone, maybe someone on your team can can record it. Um, maybe you start off with the intro because you have the the wisdom and the the gravitas yes. um, and then but the younger person is doing doing the actual teaching i'm you're seeing that a lot like an education situation could be uh, a whole lot of content that's taught by that's re recorded by someone else but that you have guided the the curriculum of or the the flow of the message for because don't just i mean your experience is extremely valuable so just figure out how to put that on video start with the yes attitude instead of a no attitude Plus, people in the 50s, 60s, 70s are watching videos, so they'll probably relate to you a lot better For rather sure. than some 20, 30-year-old telling them how the world is. Who doesn't know anything. Yes, yes 100%. <laughs> like, Because we all just need a, a, a few clients, right? There's 8 billion people in the world. You don't want 8 billion clients. You, you know, you want the clients that are going to allow you to grow your business, be ideal, have your business not be miserable. Um, so maybe a strong 45-year-old, tax client is really great and you don't want the 25 year old because they're a world of problems yeah loving your passion and your insights kate it's been superb talking to you today thanks so much for inspiring us to get more onto video i am so glad to be here uh, do it y'all i want reports from everyone who has taken that courageous step